Hey, this is Ralph Sheepers, and you're listening and watching to Heavy Metal Horror. A whole van load of people went. No, the whole van load went in. It, it, it was it. it Might have been the Vindicator van, or it was the the aggressor van. And they went into town and they picked some stuff up. And so they come. They're coming back. And this is where like DK's in the car and he's got the side door on the van open and he's like, you know, saying something crazy. And the part that they needed came flying out of the van while they were driving down the road. And it did it actually didn't get damaged, but it was <laughs> what the fuck, man? Nobody cared I mean, about anything. We, yeah, we could be we could be handed a reckless. solution and we're just like, let's smash it. Let's throw it out the fucking <laughs> yeah. didn't even <laughs> t- total nonsense. It was just oh, it was so good. It was crazy, so man. glorious. Yeah, tell I, them I about, tell them about the uh tell them about when you guys lost the poser disposer grill. That's one of my favorites. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So leading up to this event um there's another event that happens so we're driving in the middle of the night through this desert now we've got multiple things repaired at this point um and we're just driving through the night and there's no other cars on the road it's pitch black outside most of us are sleeping and then once again i'm in the back and all i hear is all this huge banging and (laughs) everyone's screaming and there's banging on the roof of the van and i'm like oh my god so i'm shooting up and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, everyone's screaming. I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? And we ended up, sl- so they slammed the brakes and stopped the van. And we're like, I was like, what, what the fuck was on the roof? What was that? And they were like, dude, it was a fucking owl. This owl flew out in front of the van <laughs> in the middle of the darkness of the desert and fucking hit the front of the van and went tumbling across the top of the van and woke us all up out of a dead sleep. All I'm I hear off, is man. Like, sounds like a body. Yeah. I don't know if we hit a person or what the fuck. I'm like, it just sounds like a body rolling on the roof of this giant van. And I'm like, oh my God. So that was a whole thing. So we stopped and we were trying to find the owl. The owl was nowhere in sight. Maybe it got away. We don't know. So we are just like, what the fuck? So then we're all like on alert. You know, now we're out in the middle of the desert. Everyone's awake. We're like, okay, like what's next? Like fucking shit's just flying out of the night to try to fucking kill us. So we keep driving. Um, and we get to the exit where we're supposed to get off. Um, and this is for the Las Vegas show, I believe. Um, and we are getting going off this exit. And suddenly the whole front of the van, the whole welded poser disposer thing drops off the front of the van and hits the road. <laughs> Sparks are flying everywhere up in front of the van. We're pushing this fucking thing down the exit, down the road <laughs> of the exit, the curved exit. And it, there's just sparks shooting everywhere. And it was, we're half, everyone's screaming again. And we finally get to the end of this exit road. We pull the van off to the side. This giant fucking hunk of metal is sitting in the middle of the road, spiked metal (laughs) off off of this exit. Thank God it was the middle of the night or somebody would have ran into it and fucking died. (laughs) We go. So then, so then it's a whole thing because Chris wants to keep this thing (laughs) and Kevin wants it gone. Kevin's pissed. Kevin's like, over it like we've already had we've we've had so many crazy like near death like accidents <laughs> with this van that like he's done he's like i want this thing gone that and it was like well we can't weld it back on so the only option to keep it is to put it in the trailer with all the band shit so chris is like well i can rearrange the trailer dude i can i can take everything out and we can fit it it's like he's like i don't want to get rid of it like it's too cool this and that and whatever <laughs> and kevin's just like beyond pissed off he's like fuck that we're not keeping this he's like look at how are we going to carry this like this you know whatever and we ended up coming to terms and keeping it and chris pulled everything out of the trailer this is all on the side of the road right by this exit um we loaded it in all the three of us and he put everything back in and he made it fit and made it work and it was turned out to be completely pointless to keep it because it was never used again for any reason and i don't even know what we did with it at the end of the band or what I know that we sold the van to like some random, like, I don't even know, just some dude. I think he came in and was like, would you guys sell? We were practicing at some point and some guy like came into our practice space and was like, would you guys sell that van? And we were like, yeah, because it was broke down. It was just right. broke down sitting at the practice spot. 
So we just sold him the van with all the vinyl decals and everything on it. And <laughs> that was that. And so I'm, I'm almost certain that he probably took all that stuff off, but yeah. Um, Maybe but, he got the yeah, poser damn, disposer thing too. You no, know? no, he, no. he didn't oh. get that to my not. I don't think so. But, I, but then again, I don't know who, who or where or what, how we would have kept that, but the whereabouts of the poser disposer time. grill are unknown. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. where would that even, did somebody, did, did we throw it in a dumpster or something? I don't know, but. Um, it could be make a nice mantle piece. Oh my God. Yeah. A man. coffee that, table. Honestly, that's, that's one thing um that i that i do wish that one of us had i'm at at whatever cost to their relationship status i wish somebody would have kept the, <laughs> kept that damn metal thing but uh yeah then we we get to vegas and we play this show at a place called the beauty bar and it's like this 1960s salon that somebody turned into a metal venue basically um and uh i mean it was a a show that we played to like a couple people one of them was completely wasted and the other person i don't think even knew that there was a show happening that night so it was uh <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was one a- of those <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. man i remember well, like- yeah, i mean what no because in vegas you guys were with us when we went to uh the porn emporium right you guys made it there during the day i believe or did you guys maybe it was the next day the show was because you guys were hanging with us because i know that Maybe there I shouldn't time. say any. I don't yeah. want to get nobody in trouble, but some oh, no, people, no. some people in the possessor camp went to a live show. Well, and you weren't one of them. You I weren't one not, of them. Which but, is fun. Uh, man, there's so much uh, <laughs> bullshit around all that. But yeah, uh, yeah, I didn't. Um, I may that as place well was have, huge. It was it, massive. It was this. It was like this giant porn place, and that's <laughs> what they had in there. It, I mean, I, and I'm, 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 I'm I can't describe imagine. how big it was it was so huge and they i think they had like crates of vhs you remember they had on pallets oh man. there were pallets of old vhs porns and it was just like the all you guys had to say was went, vhs and i i might have tagged along but we, so we that's, went in, that's what we see in the us, back of your uh, Vic. is that what we're yeah, saying no no your shows? no no, I didn't end up Did you loot anything. the place? I should have. I should have. <laughs> yeah, he bought the whole collection. We, we all went in there. Even Sarah went in there, like, begrudgingly. But we were in Pawn Stars, and we yep, the Pawn Stars right. place, whatever it was called. And it was real small and stupid, and, and Kid yeah. was trying to pawn off one of his bases. And I'm like, dude, they're going to rip that. you off. Don't do that. And when we came back out, we looked across the street, and we're like, holy shit, that place is a porn place, and it's the size of, like, a Kmart. Let's go in there. <laughs> And and yes. then yeah, you guys, a couple of you guys were like, I because like I said, I think Jesse went too, and they oh, there's a live show, and it was like five bucks or something. I don't know. The lady blew smoke out of her vagina or one of those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. I don't I remember. remember. You, I remember. I remember everybody coming out before it was done and being like, no, <laughs> bad <laughs> idea. So this is the funny thing. I'll I'll let you in on a, a little bit of this, but um, I, so I decided to stay in the van with our very strange bass player John Pearson, um. He didn't go for unknown reasons, but I didn't go because I was like, well, if this gets back to my girlfriend, she's going to be pissed, right? All right. So, um, and, you know, that that was all it took. But basically, I ended up, she was like, well, what are you guys doing? And I was like, well, I'm just chilling in the van. The guys are somewhere else or whatever. And so she's prying with me. I end up being like, look, just in case this gets out that this happened, I want you to know that I'm not there with them. and you know, X, Y, Z or whatever. Anyways, she ends up getting through me what the other guys are doing. Cause I was like, I know that this story's going to get back and it's going to seem like I was there and I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you gotta me, that one. trying to save my, my own skin. So, yeah. um, <laughs> to no avail. So basically yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I tell this to her, she's like, okay, whatever. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, I say that I'm sure there was a huge discussion, but, <laughs> uh, this was long in the past now, but so she's like, yeah, okay. Anyways, she ends up telling all the other girls that are with the other guys, right? <laughs> this gets back to the guys, and there was talk. At, it, it became this blew up to be this big thing because now all the girls are pissed at all the guys, right? And we're halfway across the country. Um, so it, it was a fucking disaster. And they're like, well, Robbie told so-and-so, and then she told everyone else. And <laughs> I was like, look, dude, she – she asked and i knew this was going to come out anyway so like i had to just say what it was and i'm like sorry you know whatever and there was like talk at that moment they were it was like considering them kicking me out of the band basically for that (laughs) and i was like yeah fucking right dude like i i thought i mean at the time i was probably a lot cockier than i am now but i was like dude you're not gonna 
me being ejected from this band is the band ending because it's not going to be the same because nobody else in the area did anything like what I did with the vocals anyway. I was like, it's not going to, you can't kick me out of the damn band. I'm like writing the songs and shit. Like it's, it, it was ridiculous that, and it just the thought of like kicking me out of the band for that reason. I was like, whatever, but I mean, this was all half drunk in conversation anyway. So this is all a blur to everyone involved. And it was just, <laughs> they were just pissed at the moment. Cause their girlfriends were pissed at them. And looking back now, none of that shit matters. But. There was some chaos. There was some chaos in that camp. I can remember, you know, like sure. there was some, there was some tension with certain <laughs> things. And I mean, that's, when you're on the road with individuals, that's bound to happen. You know, we all had our own things where it would be like, what the fuck? Why is this going on? Why are you doing this? Or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, but, yeah. some weird vibes there for Vegas had a, uh, took a toll on everyone for yeah. different reasons. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, but I mean, that's kind of where it ended because we were going to play another show. In right. You guys Arizona. were, you, yeah, you guys were, well, you guys were on a couple of shows with us. I think uh, that, mm-hmm. that ended up getting dropped. Well, I, I mean, everybody was, was on the whole vector. thing vector yeah. was gonna play and i no, that was I, our last that was our last hang together yeah we went up to the venue we went up to the venue yeah. we go inside they and they have like this projector in front of the stage and they're they're playing some sports ball game and we're like walking around looking at the stage and the owner comes up and he's like can i help you guys and uh dave DeSanto was, uh, was like <clears throat> and we got a show here tonight he was like the fuck you do <laughs> And we were like, what the fuck? And so they're calling their promoter and the guy was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you they got sports tonight. And we just didn't play a show that night. Yeah, it was so ridiculous. I remember pulling up. And of course, we get there by the skin of our teeth. The van is probably like skidding without wheels at this point. We're just like <laughs> pull up and they're just like, there's no show. Like, sorry. Like, what? And we're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, and it that sucks sucked. too because I was really looking forward to playing with Vector because at the time that was like hot shit that, that had just come out and like vector i thought like he was doing vocally some cool stuff with yeah kind of like uh sheepdog from razor and i was like yeah this is cool so um yeah i was i was bummed that i didn't get to play a show with with them but it was sad i will say i will say that the the whole ending because that and you know the aggressor was also on that bill but they got stuck in vegas they never came out of vegas so what, what was that deal with that again I so forget. yeah, like they 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 weren't on the next show. We had like a show in California, and they were on that show actually is what it was. And they opted to like get some like nice rooms in Vegas and gamble, and then they just ran out of money. Like that's what they did. <laughs> so so then we then we got a hold of you guys and we're like, well, you guys are on this festival if you want it because aggressor's not coming. You guys were like, we can't make it. That was yeah. probably during some breakdown okay. thing. And yeah, then yeah, I yeah. think, you know, Arizona might have been the next night and, uh, you know, we didn't have a show. And because I remember playing San Antonio and being like, yeah, we're the only band left from this bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the tour. There the were tour like package. three or four. We played like yeah. three or four gigs for, and where people were like, where's the rest of the bands? And we were like, we don't know. Right. Yeah, we don't know what we happened. Lost. We're on our own. It sucks. It's a though, war man, of a tr- was- tour of attrition. <laughs> yeah, man, oh, it man. was it was uh, it was sad, though. It, it petered out at the end. It did. And yeah, uh, so it, the was... first three weeks were really, really fucking exciting and fun. I mean, it, despite all the all the like, kind of nonsense, you know, like we all got to go to fucking, you know, the oh, experience. Cool. We did the experience music project. And and I think that was cool for everybody, uh, you know, and and uh, yeah, it was the camaraderie is is the saddest thing is, is the thing, the, the most nostalgic thing that that tugs the heartstrings when you're doing something like that, you know, as you're spending weeks on end with these guys and you, you just get, you get super tight with them and and it's, it's so much fun. Yeah. And it's funny too, because like, honestly, right where it ended for us, like after Vegas, I think we were all kind of like done with it anyway, as far as like the, just between the band members at that moment, it wasn't good because all the girlfriend shit. And I was like, Oh my God, like (laughs) we were like, get us out of this van from one another. This is like, this was so, st- I mean, you know, not a hundred miles down the road where we all cool with each other again. So it didn't really matter, but, um, right. but yeah, I mean, it was, we were just, obviously everyone was like beyond out of money too. I, I remember I was the only one oh, yeah. who saved any money for that tour at all. I think everyone else left with literally fucking like nothing in their bank account. Like, right, right. Like, and here I'm just like fucking, you know, buying these parts and doing this different shit. I th- DK bought the one thing on his card. I think the alternator, uh, 
bell or somebody somebody did something which i was like oh fuck yeah yeah um, so it wasn't for lack of people wanting to help but it was yeah i mean fucking there was no money at that point we were like yeah right god can we even get home like there that was the other thing it was such a huge stretch between mm. vegas and virginia it was right. like i couldn't even first it was pure miracle that we got that far anyway in that van so then it's right. like well now we got to traverse the rest of the damn country to get back home like how are we gonna do it and the funny thing is i think from there on it was like almost smooth sailing which figures because then it's like we have nothing you know it's yeah like, it's not like we have to worry about shows or anything but it was just so bizarre it's like we're having the smooth ride all the way back home like i don't remember anything anything happening with the van from there <laughs> on but um another thing about vegas i'll share with you because it's really fucking bizarre um i have this very vivid memory of being on the phone with my girlfriend at the time and talking to her about all the bullshit that was happening I was outside the venue. I don't know if you remember Vic, but in the back of the venue, there, there was like a chain link fence. It was real yeah. high. Yeah. So um, I'm out there just walking and talking, you know, whatever. And there's a big gate on the back of the fence. And I don't know what possessed me, but I <clears throat> opened the gate and went outside the gate. And I'm in this basically an alleyway. Um, I don't know if you ventured around that place, but it was bad out there. The, that area, <laughs> worst area I've ever been in, I think. I mean, I could literally hear glass breaking and like fucking police sirens and shit. Yeah. So and this was all in the 10 minutes that this phone call lasted. So I'm walking out there and like, I start getting this feeling of like, oh man, I shouldn't be out here. Actually. I need to get back someplace else, which is very rare for me to ever have a feeling like that. So I'm like walking around talking to her and then I like run into something. Like I'm, I step on something and I about trip over it. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I look down and it's a fucking person and they're in <laughs> A, a trash bag basically they have a trash bag <gasps> over them and it's what? not now i mean this person wasn't dead or anything, <clears throat> or, as far as i know i don't know but they were like they were covered in a trash bag yeah. and i was like oh fuck this is like a homeless person i'm like what the fuck? i'm like looking down at this person and they're asleep or whatever and i'm like okay and then i glance up and the rest of the alleyway is filled with fucking homeless people in trash bags just <laughs> as far as the eye can see yeah i think you came in and said <laughs> don't go out there yeah, I think he warned everybody not to venture oh, not outside of the... because it was about the scariest fucking sight I ever saw. <laughs> it was like something I, I mean, I've never even seen anything like that in a movie. I was like, what? I'm like looking down we... this person's face. I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? And then I look yeah. up at everyone else. This is a alleyway filled with people that are covered up in trash bags and newspapers, and they're all sleeping. Wow. Hopefully, we had sleeping. to park. We had to park yeah. uh, uncomfortably oh, far man. away from the venue. I remember, oh, yeah. and it was like in that part of the town. It was right down the road, but it was like the residential area, and it was like super sketchy and yeah, they had like, like bars on the windows and shit. Weirdly yeah. dark too. Like yes. there weren't street lights in the residential area, right. and I was like, I told Sarah, I was like, this is fucked up, man. We shouldn't probably park our van down here. I mean, nothing yeah. happened, thankfully, but it was no. Man. Well, it's funny because like looking down that alleyway, it's like all these homeless people in this crazy image, and then but at the end of the alleyway is literally like the strip. It's like the lights of Vegas up It is like, so you're like looking at this dark, horrible alleyway with all these homeless people in this crazy image. And then like right there, it's like, the yeah, walking by like, right. Like, Probably oh all God. former band members who couldn't make it back to Virginia <laughs> in their van. Could be yep. like, do you, I don't do know. You have I don't a know if you guys, <laughs> only the bowl last. If, if you guys <laughs> have ever watched like any of those, like those crime shows, there's one in Vegas. I don't know. Is it C as Crosby stills Nash and young in Vegas. I don't know. CSNY in Vegas, whatever NYPD in yeah. Vegas, there's a Vegas one. And I watched enough of those shows to know that if you're like five seconds off the strip, that's where crime happens yes. in Vegas. And this place was wow. five seconds off the yeah, strip. I'm, I'm sure if I hadn't ended that phone conversation, I'd have been probably dead five minutes later. And <laughs> yeah. One of the many casualties of that, <laughs> that alleyway. Yeah. Was, uh, that was crazy shit. Shanked in Vegas. Yeah, that, that alleyway was like a Sarlacc. <laughs> right. <laughs> just everyone up. <laughs> now, so yeah, I got back inside real quick, but, um, <laughs> I do have a, so one of the craziest, funniest stories is um, at some point, I forget what state, we ended up pulling off on the side of the road probably because something was wrong. And we talked to this dude who was just out there with a, like a barbecue grill. He just happened to be like on the side of the road or something. And he was, he was making all this, bar <laughs> this is it's like such a ridiculous Roadkill? premise anyway. I, I mean, for all we, I, this is the thing. Nobody thought anything through. Every action was just pure. I don't even, it's not even instinct to live. It's like instinct to die. We were just like, <laughs> I don't know your, what. Your what worst in, just like firing without a 
<laughs> yes. Yes, without, without any, any ego control. or super ego yeah. to keep it in check. So we we meet this guy, real nice guy. Um, you know, he's just like, hey guys, how's it going? And we're like, oh, you know, good. We're having this trouble, but we're good, blah, 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 this and that. So he's just cooking all this barbecue and he's like, well, do you guys like want some of this barbecue like i'll cook you some and you can have it or whatever and we were just like okay so he cooks us up all this barbecue okay this and he gives it to us in these um paper bags basically um anyways chris is he he eats some and he's like oh man it's so good and chris is like gross as fuck so he's just like eating this stuff with his hands it's just sliding down his shirt that he hasn't changed in the past 60 days and we've only been on tour for 30 so he's like he's just eating this shit and it's all dripping all over him and <laughs> as as if he hasn't eaten before so so he's he's just loving this right he wants he's all on board he wants all the barbecue we can get blah 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 all the rest of us are kind of like okay whatever and and kevin was stoked on this barbecue too because he was just uh real big into that i guess i don't know but um i just knew that it wasn't something that i was willing to risk but anyways they get all these paper bags of barbecue just huge big amounts and they put them in the back of the van right next to the mattress basically um as you can imagine this is is much grosser than i can even describe to you but it's these big ass bags full of barbecue um eventually we're driving around you know going wherever we need to go and we're like well we need to store this somehow so we put it in the cooler where we kept some of the beer or whatever else and um they put it in the cooler anyways this is probably I don't I don't know it might have been five or ten days later. Um, me and Chris were in the back of the van on the mattress, and Chris stunk to high heaven at all times. Basically, he's not ashamed to say that. Neither am I. He was the stinkiest <laughs> dude I've ever met. Okay, rotten, rotten, rotten. So <laughs> this was normal though. Like I know his I know that of him, but something in the something woke us both up, and it was the smell, and we were like about to throw up like it was it was so disgusting and we were like what the fuck is this we're like searching through the van trying to figure out what is this that's making the smell it's like like a dead animal or something so come to find out it's this barbecue that we've just let rot in this cooler okay all this tons of this rotten meat all right and the cooler is just filled with water beers that are rusted shut (laughs) and just this horrible barbecue that's in there just marinating with all this bullshit right so we're like, oh my God, we got to get this out of the van, pull over, blah, blah, blah. We pull over behind this Del Taco and we end up dumping this cooler out onto the grass and all these beers and everything, they're all rusted shut. And it's just this nasty meat water, just the most horrible shit you can imagine. And not two seconds later, we dump this stuff out and we're all about, we're all literally about to throw up. Um, this, these homeless people come running out of, the bushes basically from out behind this del taco and they're scooping up these beers and like <laughs> running off with them and i'm like they are gonna be so fucking sick if they drink not to mention it's all rusted shut we couldn't you couldn't <laughs> break it open i mean you'd have to break the bottle but it's like it's rusted shut with this rancid meat water and oh. they're all come running out of the wood it was just like <laughs> it's shit that i can't even imagine like it, we're just like what like we see these people running out and they're all like rummaging and like <clears throat> grabbing this stuff up and we're like what even is this and they're but it was clear that they were homeless and apparently totally clueless as well but they, they ran off with these beers back into wherever they were and we were <laughs> we were all flabbergasted and there's all this rotten meat just sitting on the right there with all the beer was, I'm like, <laughs> oh my god it was, it was, this sounds like movie scenes like this dude is, it was i'm telling you like it, little golems come running out of the bushes I couldn't even, you know? like my precious if i cried yeah it was literally like yeah. and like, scurrying back away like, yeah i'm like, like a post-apocalyptic yes. Mad Max like, wow movie. the album's yeah. coming true yeah it's, yeah but uh yeah we was, don't have to ask you about your spinal tap moment that's for sure we've got plenty yeah. already oh, yeah, yeah, yeah there was lots of them it, it was wow well and so the del taco thing continues though so we're at this del taco now we're behind it parked behind it in some sort of alleyway and um we all get out of the van. We're all sick, you know, from this whole situation and it's just disgusting and it's been laying by the fucking mattress. So we're like, all right, we got to get out and get some fresh air. So we go, we go into this, uh, this Del Taco and we're like, all right, obviously that's like the first place you want to eat. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, <laughs> You're not feeling good. So, so we're like, right, yeah, well, and, and to be, you know, to be fair, we had never had Del Taco before we're from the East coast and it's not around here. Um, right. So we were like, okay, you know, we'll try it, whatever. Everyone gets over 
however they're feeling. And we're like, all right, let's go eat. So um, we go inside and order food and drinks and everything's all good. And Kevin would randomly just get violently sick. Um, so he, he drank this. All he got, I think, was a fucking fountain drink. Okay. It's about the safest bet you can do. He gets this fountain drink. And then later, um, at some point, he's taking a nap. And he wakes up from the nap in the front seat. And he slings open the door. We're stopped, uh, obviously. But not that I – it wouldn't be a surprise if somebody just opened the door while it was running. But he – so we're stopped. He flings open the door. And he's just like <laughs> – is just flying exorcist <laughs> vomit onto the ground outside the van. And did the hobos come running? No, <laughs> please, <laughs> please God, tell me no. no. Oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah chunky no, bit. No, no. Yeah. Um, but it was just flying out, puke everywhere. And then, so we're all just like watching this, like, oh my God, like, wh- what the fuck? And then, so he gets done puking and he slams the door shut and just leans back and goes right back to sleep. And we're like, well, what was that? So then. <laughs> The next time we all talk to him, he's awake or whatever. We're like, dude, what's wrong? Like, what do you, what's, what's up with you? And he was like, dude, it had to have been that fountain drink from Del Taco. I know they don't clean those machines it's filled <laughs> with bacteria. And he's like, he's pissed. Right. So he's really, and that's the other thing about Kevin is that he would get extremely pissed about certain very specific things that seemed like ridiculous. So we were all just like, okay, Kevin, sure. Like it's not all the other factors that are in our lives right now. It's, it was definitely the fountain <laughs> drink from Del Taco. So <laughs> we're just like, okay, we'll move on with our lives. Anyways, we go, there's another Del Taco and we're like, we want to go again. He is vehemently <laughs> against this. He, he is beside himself pissed off. He's like, I'm not fucking going in there. I'm not getting a drink. I'm not eating. And he's mad. And when he's mad, he wants everyone to know. And he wants there to be a scene. He wants to make a scene. <laughs> So we're in the Del Taco in line, ready to order. And Kevin's outside just stomping, stomping around. You can see him through the advertisements on the window, his legs <laughs> just stomping back. He's marching back and forth like a kid that's mad about something, right? So so we're just like laughing. Like we think it's funny. We're like, whatever. Like <laughs> none of us gave a crap about each other. We're, we're just like, <laughs> we'll just like screw him. Like we're just gonna eat here because we want to. And he can just deal with it. So, <laughs> So we're all just having a great time la- laughing it up. And he is like more pissed than he's ever been. And so we're all ordering. And all of a sudden we hear the door open, the little ding. And, and he comes stomping in behind us. And he's just standing there behind us. Like, it's like looking at the people working there. And like, he, he's all pissed off. He's like acting like he's reared up and ready to, to do something. So we're like, whatever. That, that's just the way he acted sometimes when he was mad about something. So we're like, nothing, nothing we can do. We're just going to order our food and you can feel however you want. So we or we order our food and i think i was the last one up to order and i'm like yeah i'll have this this and this whatever and like i turn around like and i'm like oh kevin do you want anything and he goes up and there's this little like probably 17 year old latino girl working at this del taco he walks up and he's like i'd rather eat my own feces <laughs> anything or drink anything and it was all silent and all of us were just like what the fuck dude and this girl was like, okay, like whatever. And so we all, we're all like laughing our ass off. So we're, we, we go sit down and, and of course we, for some reason, decide to sit down and eat in this establishment. <laughs> Everyone has witnessed this. That's there. This big scene. He's, he's in this girl's face saying this. And we're like, what? We're like, she has no idea what happened to you. This girl, she, <laughs> this was at a different location. You know, it's like, why are you, why do you have to exact this extreme aggression <laughs> on this poor young girl that works here? Like, and, but it was the funniest damn thing and we couldn't get over it. So we're all cracking up the whole time. We're sitting there eating, having a good time. And he's just like stomping around outside, like waiting for us to come out to the van. And uh, yeah. And then and that was that, but it was just, it's something that we always joke about now. Anytime me and Mike get together, we'll, we'll talk about the Del Taco experience. And I was like, <laughs> I'd rather eat my own feces. <laughs> It was just such a strange thing to say, too. It's just like he sees, like you, it's like, you, and he's right up in this girl's face, and she has no fucking clue. I like that he said feces and not shit. Like yeah. that makes it even funnier. But that's just the way he was. He liked it. There was like the sense of drama to him that he just loved to. Yeah, he he just loved. To be that way. I don't think. Well, I, I'll say he would. He didn't, he didn't love oh. to be that way, but that was just his natural 
state sometimes. When I don't know why you guys didn't last longer than you did. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of extreme uh, personalities, I'll put it that way. Oh, <laughs> man. Felt like I was always oh, the one trying boy. to even it out. But me being in front of him and him, like, acting up like that, I mean, we all got a kick out of it anyway. So I just turn around. I'm like, oh, do you want anything? <laughs> Not knowing I'm lighting the fuse to this nuclear bomb. But, about to happen in this building like it was so funny. oh was man just, oh, yeah boy. one of one of many things i mean there there were plenty of times where he'd be pissed about stuff and shit like that would happen or or he would like throw up and like blame it on something like man. <laughs> like the specific bacteria in the fountain drink at del taco it's like okay <laughs> not that we had like a whole bottle of whiskey last night <laughs> yeah right <laughs> not eat not eat out of a soup can with your hands i know he was yeah, one of the yeah, soup yeah. canners man you i know, know he funny? was digging it, in there if i'm not mistaken i think that was like really early in the tour too that that happened. it was it so was no reason for this level of desperation <laughs> <laughs> we're at like the first like i mean second it was like, like, like a like fucking it. plastic spoon it was somewhere. one of the first two shows we i walked by and i'm like the fuck are you guys doing and i never eat, had an answer i never had an answer soup. for anything <laughs> explain it i chris and i mean chris would do anything with with anything he probably would have eaten that fucking meat if it weren't for us throwing it out yeah. like, he's just like <laughs> he was balls to the wall with everything dude he didn't <laughs> He was just like, oh, whatever. I mean, if man. it wasn't for the smell making us. Had to fight the bush hobos for it, though. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> the bush hobos. I've never seen anything. I could never even imagine anything the like that. The first rule was... about bush hobo fight club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't shared that story with many people because it's totally unbelievable and insane, but it's totally true. And I think only in California could something like that happen. Like, I can't imagine anywhere else on earth. That... <laughs> great oh my gosh it being real yeah, it was yeah there was there were definitely some doozies man i most of it's a blur yeah, for me recall? i i mean like i remember most of that stuff i remember i don't know if where you guys were for uh uh chris uh, stevenson's uh desert explosion were you guys part of the caravan for that when we had to pull over because chris was going to shit oh, yeah, himself yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think went out we, in the we, middle of the yeah, it was yeah. The of the we, we all stopped because we, we were we yeah. were all we were all in, like a caravan at that point, yeah, and we, all, we all pulled over because we all had to call each other on, on the cell phone. Hey, man, Chris has got to take a shit, and uh, we you, you got toilet paper in your van. Yeah, we have van. toilet paper in our van. Yeah, uh, did he go in the middle of the road or did he run off to the side? No, he ran off into like the desert and found like a yeah, nook. Okay. James yeah. LaRue filmed the whole thing. Right. Yeah. I was going to say, I think somebody got it. On camera. Yeah. Because <laughs> we also got, we also went, because we hazed you guys immediately when you guys got there. Yes. Yes. We were like, oh man, uh, new band's got to buy the beer. And you guys did. Like you guys yeah. were like, well, well that was okay. another one of those things where, dude, this is so funny. So <laughs> we pulled up and we're like, oh, this is great. You know, we feel like this camaraderie or whatever. And we kind of feel this like coldness, like right off the bat, we're like, okay. And then they're like, you guys are like, well, yeah, you guys got to buy this beer. So, and it was just very like, uh, like, go ahead. Like, okay, go. Like we're, we're waiting. And we're, we're just like, we just pulled up and like, not, not ready for anything. You, weren't even there. you guys were there for like three yeah. minutes and that's yeah, was, we told no, you had right to go buy beer. Yeah. And that's why we thought like, okay, I guess this is how this is going to be. Like, what, what did we get into here? So but it was funny because you get certain members of the band. They're like, oh, fuck those guys. We, we don't need to do this, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm the one that's like, well, maybe we should do it because uh, we we want to get off on the right foot with these people. And I'm not saying we have to keep doing this, but like if this is, you know, whatever, like let's go ahead and do it. But it's just so funny because every certain thing that happened, that, and that's the funny thing about being in a band too, is not only like having to work together musically and getting everything, all the wheels have to be going in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. But like just little things like that could throw everything into a tornado of like <laughs> trying to wrangle all and, the and that's, honestly through them like we don't need this and like the you know somebody like me like well let's just do it and then like we'll sort it out you know if if they keep asking us to do shit or whatever and um yeah I remember doing it and I mean from there on it was no big deal it was kind of like a joke. no that was remember, a, that, well that was the only thing and and it really was we were just fucking with you guys and then you guys right. left and then we found that you guys left your camera. And then we all filmed our asses with it. Yes, <laughs> that's what we did. They were they were so excited. They were so cute. They were making tour diary, and we they because they walked in with it, 
And the, <laughs> why in the hell it left your guys' hands? You're only there for like three minutes. Sets the camera down, leaves. Everybody in the band leaves. Don't leave us with fucking your camera because we're going to yep. film our genitalia with it. And that's what we did. And the best part was, it, all, yeah, it took oh, you guys uh, it took you guys a real long time to say anything about it after you got back too. when you were finally reviewing the film. Oh, yeah, we yeah. were with our asses, <laughs> nutsacks I mean, hanging like, out to look at whatever else we had just filmed. And then yeah. we're like rewinding back. We're like, wait, what is this? We're like, what the fuck is that? This and an like, eclipse. Oh, that's somebody what? Like, Someone's got BDE. Uh, yeah, uh, D, 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 uh, yeah. DK, like DK, I think, I think, I think DK think handled. Uh, yeah, you weren't seeing my wiener. You were just seeing my asshole. Everything's too small. It ain't hanging down. There. I think DK yeah, was, was like the ring. Like DK had the camera, and he said like uh, he said something crazy, and then like like half the band had their asses out. Yeah, and Brian might have had his dick out. Brian might have actually like got his dick out and flapped it around. I don't know what he was doing. We tried to be a little cordial. Brian was off the chain, man. Yeah, it was like a shaky cam Blair Witch. A little more cordial. (laughs) (laughs) You showed your asshole. You're being Uh, more cordial. We're not going to Yeah, we just had our assholes. I'm pretty sure Brian, Brian told Please refer to our sphincters. (laughs) Yeah, we were... uh, The anal uh, bones. And I remember just being like, okay, this is what this is going to be like, I guess. We're... Oh, that's God. fine you know oh, we're, so we're... <laughs> that, and i'm chris still has all the tapes and everything so he's he's got one well, actually they were yeah digital camera i think but he's got yeah. all, all the footage um we don't want to see we were talking about up. doing uh potentially something with because we've got tons of stuff yeah um, we were pot- talking about potentially doing some sort of podcast or some sort of something where we can put all of that um together or, or yeah that would be fantastic i mean i don't YouTube or whatever you fucking yeah make that happen. just for history that would be hilarious yeah i mean you got oh, yeah, I mean, that, some that's like one of those one night yeah. events all around the country one <laughs> night only tonight possessor on the road you know i mean you gotta Ooh. fucking see that oh yeah yeah oh and yeah i mean a lot of yeah. people you know a lot of people locally here were really um into possessor too so i think it would just be cool to kind of yeah. let everybody in on even just seeing some of the stories that we've told people like it'd right. be cool to be able to add some imagery to some of that and some content yeah, you guys and- filmed a lot of stuff so that that would be cool. <laughs> i filmed as much as i could but i think most of my files are corrupted now it was the same thing with a digital camera I know, man <clears throat> yeah, and like- i don't know what the hell the file type changed and now you can't fucking load that's the what image i'm scared of. Load yeah, it, I, so. I don't want to like go to try to do that now and like it to find that it's all messed up or something. Yeah, Chris it was sucks. saying he was going to send me. Um, I just talked to Chris for the first time in a long time. Um, mm. here the other night, and he was, he was talking about like, oh, dude, like, should I just like send this stuff to you and you can put it put it up somewhere? And I'm like, yeah, dude, because basically I just want to get it off of whatever piece of, of media it's connected to SD card, whatever, mm. and have it someplace else too. Because I don't right. want like that and someplace fresh or some. Basically, I just want to save it from whatever fate may become it if it stays wherever it is right um, we could have a titled possessor with special guests the bush hobos so, <laughs> god, yeah they... god knows we didn't uh, i know we didn't film that i know because i mean none of us were right, we were all right. sick we were all yeah. like, all yeah. of us i mean it was like everyone in the van was like stop the fucking van something is rotting get it out and then we threw it all out and they just immediately came rushing out and yeah <laughs> oh man yeah the shows i honestly i don't remember i can't fucking remember much about the shows to be completely honest yeah i mean um, it's, i think i had just turned 21 so i was like i mean obviously i was drinking at every show but i was um i mean i had a blast i remember i, I remember bits and pieces like i remember at the vegas show they had like some sort of like bar at the front of the stage it was like a it's like a wooden bar across part of the front of the stage or something. yeah i remember like during heavy metal underground during the little bit of a break i had in the vocal for that because it's a the song is like barreling forward i go rushing off to the bar to get a drink and i got a drink i remember jumping and like s- sliding across the bar just in time to get back to the microphone to hit the next <laughs> whatever it was. and it was just like pure luck that the timing and it ended up that way but but i mean at that show i was like oh whatever like uh, like we're just you know just having a blast anyway it's there was a couple people there i was like oh let's just go crazy right did you guys Where, play spoke it? did you guys play spokane were you on that bill i feel like we did that that was a dk weird. show he set that up it's the spokane. hellfire or something spoke yeah, 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 yeah. that cool ass 
venue that had the big stage and well no this this, this it was, was a it was a small stage it was, was it? it was kind of a smaller stage but where was that hell's kitchen or whatever was that something that, that might have been what the call what the name of it was it, i mean maybe it was one of the bigger stages on the dude on the i remember tour. being impressed it had like levels to it and like it was yeah it was cool because uh you could say they you could definitely stand on speakers and and shit they it definitely had like a textured for animated folks was that that weird there was like nobody there yeah no one was there and the opening band was named after like a tree they were called like sycamore or something and they introduced us as vindictor do you remember that because that fucking brian (laughs) loved that (laughs) so aggressor gets up so so this this tree band plays and then uh you guys might have played and then aggressor and then us Mm -hmm. but i know after aggressor set Brian was like, stick around for Vindictor. Yeah, I, yes, I remember that. You know what's funny is that I was looking through like a, a drawer here in my house just full of random junk. And I have a koozie from that band, that tree, whatever they were called, tree something or other. And I was like, like Sycamore I like, Elm. For a second, I'm like, what the hell is this? And then it was like came flashing back to me like this show with this random stupid band. I'm like, DK, oh DK and your bassist couldn't stay in the venue. Yes. They could only be in there if they were Not playing. They had enough. to leave. Yeah. Because they were, it was 21 and over. Yeah. 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 We had a couple, <laughs> we had one or two shows that were like that where it was yep. like, well, they can just DK wasn't allowed in. And, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess John, wow. yeah. John Pearson, what maybe he wasn't. Oh, God. Maybe that's why he didn't go into the strip club or whatever it was. I don't it know. It might have been. I mean, yeah. He was 18, though, wasn't he? Or was he 17? had to have been 18 maybe it was i know there was a couple gigs he was over well we ended up with gage who gage was younger than all of us and he was too young in most places but um right phenomenal bass player yeah Um, but yeah john i think he was i think he was old enough to uh, he was over 18 but he was less than 21 and i think certain places 21 was the cutoff or whatever yeah um so yeah we had some some issues with that but yeah, I remember just like sitting in the van with him and it was like so awkward in, in Vegas because we were just sitting there. We we're in the van for like two hours, like just sitting there in silence, like waiting for everyone to finish up doing whatever fucking crazy shit they were doing. And, like, <laughs> it was just so funny. I remember certain parts of Vegas feeling like it was just something out of like Vice City. There's like random yeah. news- newspapers with like Elvis's face, like rolling down the street. And, like, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like you could right, collect, you could collect all the hooker stuff. cards. Like, there was yeah. all the hooker cards. Those guys slinging hooker cards. <laughs> they were like baseball cards. I remember there was something where, where like you put quarters into it or something, and you look through like this peephole thing into like, and it was just like a picture of some naked chick. Yeah, it's, just, it's like these <laughs> yeah, are the they things they have on the side of the street. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you get your newspaper, or you can put two quarters in and see a picture of a naked girl, just <laughs> still shot, like it's the 1920s. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> it's like what and what's the purpose of that it's in the middle of the street yeah you're not you're not someone doing just gonna there. like whip it out in the middle of the street and just have <laughs> yeah, a time it's nice it's good <laughs> i paid my two quarters i'm gonna get my money <laughs> it's, it's like are you just supposed to take that image with you home and be like okay well, that was good enough for me yeah that was nice i don't know i need a, I need a sears spring catalog with the bikinis in it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah victoria say, secrets I, yeah back then that 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 used to be passable but yeah <laughs> expect more nowadays i don't know yeah <sighs> oh man. shit yeah man crazy crazy stuff but uh, i mean it was it was a blast that tour was crazy i mean we we did a couple tours after that that were a lot of fun too just up and down the east coast um playing the ohio show with you guys was awesome warriors of metal i don't think that was on the tour I think that was no, just- yeah, that was a, that was fun though, because anytime you know you get to hang out, especially with people that you've established relationships with, you know, yeah, I think yeah. we I think we hung out for most of that show too. Um, yeah, it was which cool. one that was, was that? Was that two or no? That was shit when we started playing three or four, so it was either four or five. I think can't yeah, remember which James, which WOM that was. James J. LaRue was with you guys then. Yeah, um, and yeah, that was where we did the uh, heading out to the highway. Um, yeah together that was cool that was um, fun i i told i i told uh we, we had a uh, jp on the show uh and he was oh, singing yeah. with borrow time they were also on that bill yeah i've got their shirt that, still that i got from that um show nice might be worth some cash uh <laughs> no for me I'm, it, it has a memory for me i'm not like oh cool 15 bucks <laughs> yeah, yeah um that was that was a that was hilarious though man because um i think it was Dan Hammer had the words written on his hand. 
I don't know if you remember that. Yes. And Dude, I uh, had some of the words written on my, cause I was like, you? <laughs> you know, well, it's funny. Cause one of those songs, it's like, okay. It's like, I worship Judas priest. I listen to this all the time, but that's, and it's like, I'll sing along to it all the time too. But right. then it comes the moment of like, you have to know this on the spot right now. And it just, right. it more than anything, it made me doubt myself. Cause I was like, well, what if I don't remember this? And normally what I do too, and this is funny because maybe it's just for me like this, but as a vocalist, there were some times where I was like drunk or whatever was the case. I was on stage and I'm like, and I had to wait for the riff to complete. And then in my mind, it just sparks. And I remember the, the, the lyric, like it's up yeah. to the second and I'm like, okay, boom. And, and then I'm right back on track. Like if I, if I can remember the first word to the verse, yes. I'll, rem I'll remember the whole thing. Right. But if I can't, then I'll miss uh, like, there's no coming back. Right. Um, thank God that's only happened like once or something, but um, yeah, there were, there were moments I remember cutting there are specific moments. I remember being on stage and it's coming up to that second. And I'm like, Oh shit. What, what is this? And then oh, I'm like, no. Okay. This is it. Um, so, and that's what I was afraid of with heading out to the highway. So I think like the second verse I had to write like the first few lines and I was like, okay, if I just look at this for a second, I'll be good. Yeah. And that's the only time I've had to write something like that. But I was yeah, like, Dan, not... Dan Hammer wrote, I think the entire, his entire, because there's three verses in the song. And I just remember okay. being like talking to James and being like, it would be cool to do this song, but I don't really want to learn the words. That was exactly it. Yeah. I was like, I don't really feel like just, learning the words. Yeah, and I was on, like, on all of us at the moment, I was like, I know people that are going to be <laughs> yeah. there that are vo vocalists. I'll just ask them if they want to do it. Yeah. When all you guys signed up for it, I was like, yes, we can do it. And I don't oh, have yeah. to sing it. And I remember JP came up like real late because he was wasted and sleeping in a tent or something. <laughs> oh, dude, he, got, he, he stumbled yeah, on stage like last second, man. That was it was so much fun. And it was it was ridiculous. We dude. I remember looking at Ed. It's, there's the film is on you or the, the video. There's a video yeah. of it on yeah, YouTube. And on. I remember looking at Ed just being like, what the fuck's happening here, man? Dude, it was the, off the rails. <laughs> yeah. I, and I remember something about the way the song ended wasn't right like something was supposed to it was <laughs> right, up, right but right. it didn't matter we, everyone had a blast but um yeah we uh but at that show i remember dude this this is another crazy story so i uh, my car i think was there or whatever vehicle we were it had to have been my car i think because i rode up with a couple guys but mm. um so my car the door was open there was this fire like kind of raging that we had built or somebody had built um and my car my side car door is open and gauge is there gauge was i think maybe like 18 at the time or something but um I, and he was drinking anyway he didn't give a shit and none of us were his parents so we we're like whatever um <laughs> this is crazy so he he's wasted most of us are probably right there I remember at some point sitting around the fire with these people who I didn't know. And this girl who had tattoos all up like down the front of her face or something, they were all cool and nice as hell. But it was funny because this girl just handed me this thing to smoke and I just smoked it. And I, I didn't know what it was. Didn't, didn't think twice, just did it. And so did everybody else. And that was fine. And they all kind of went their separate ways. Anyways, I and Gage did too. I didn't really have any kind of feeling about it this way or that. I mean, it was no different from, you know, I, I never smoked anything basically, but um, I was already drinking and stuff. So my experience wasn't anything different than it normally would have been. But anyways, Gage is like, I see him, he's sitting in this chair by the fire and he's just been sitting there for a while. And I didn't think anything about it. Went off into the woods with these people. Um, actually, it was off in the woods where we did that. Because um, there was like another fire that other people had. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I remember like being in the woods and being like, I wonder if Gage is okay. And I like look over through the woods and I can see off in the distance. I see the fire raging and I see my car doors open and it's just merciful fates just playing out of my car. And just, we just <laughs> left it on. Um, and Gage is completely slumped over forward. Like his head is basically between his knees. His hair is hanging down to the ground and he's just sitting there like that. And I was like, okay, that doesn't look good. But I remember being so messed up at the time that I was like, I was like, oh, I'm sure he's fine. He's probably just sitting like that for a second or something. I mean, there was no logic. So I'm like, uh, whatever. Sitting like yeah. that. Sure. <laughs> like to it was totally unnatural. Okay. But, but to me, I'm like, maybe he's fine. So I'll give it a minute or whatever. Anyways, time is of no uh, 
<laughs> not keeping track of time. So yeah. sudden, I remember like things got carried away or whatever. And I remember looking back over and it was probably like an hour or two later. And I looked back over and he was in the same position. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. So I get up and I start walking through the woods back over to where he is. Cause I'm like, oh man, I hope he's okay. And as I'm walking over, he comes flipping up like this and his hair flings back. And he's just got this wide eyed look for a second. And he takes off running towards the tent, rips off his shirt, dives into the tent and passes out and is gone till the next morning. <laughs> and, uh, and I just let it go. I was just like, okay. I mean, he's fine to watch, but <laughs> up, he made yeah. it. He's, he went to bed, you know, in the most <laughs> extreme way possible, but he, something alerted him that it was time to leave the fire and go to bed. So he did. And I remember I eventually went back to the tent. He was just, had been asleep in the tent and the funny thing is the tent was on top of like tree roots and shit it was like the <laughs> worst thing in the world just it was an idiotic placement of the tent so i get in you know fall asleep uh wake up the next morning to somebody playing a, a kansas cover somebody somebody was on stage playing a kansas song and um it was just weird it was like the birds were chirping and the sun was coming in through the tent and i hear this kansas song and i'm like who the fuck is playing kansas and I like look over and Gage is still asleep right there in the same position. He's like shirt off. He's all slumped over and everything. And I'm like, Gage, wake up, dude. And he like wakes up. He's like, Oh, and I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, why? I'm like, dude, you just fucking like jetted jettisoned out of that chair after being slumped over for like three hours. (laughs) And you've ripped your shirt off in the middle of, the dirt and just threw it on the ground and dove into the tent and you've been asleep ever since and he's just like yeah man i'm fine like he's like who the fuck is playing kansas and I'm like, I don't know. let's find out i guess so open up and i forget who was but it, it was it was actually cool but it was just so bizarre to hear like in this metal festival like and it was like a pretty traditional cover too but it was yeah I remember it's a very strange memory for me like waking up in that tent and reality coming seeping back into <laughs> into our lives for a moment and i'm like gage you all right yeah okay in kansas let's go see we gotta recalibrate let's go back see. to reality right back, right back at it the next day so oh uh, yeah, man it's yeah alarms so were fun wow. it was it was wild so that that ohio show was a lot of fun because yeah we did know a lot of the people in the bands and yeah. um yeah it was just it was a cool vibe and plus everybody was camped out. So that was cool. Right. That was the funny thing though. There were two, um, I forgot about this. We decided to stay, me and Gage decided to stay in the tent and Mike and Kevin, um, and, well, and Chris stayed in the tent too. Um, I don't think he actually slept in the tent cause I would have remembered having to sleep next to him if that, if that was the case. But, <laughs> um, he, he was out somewhere sleeping other than, <laughs> other than anywhere else. Uh, he was, yeah so anyways we both sleep in the tent but mike and kevin were like adamant on getting a hotel room and we're like dude the whole experience is like being out here with everybody in the tents and like doing this whole thing like you're gonna miss out on that and they're like absolutely not like that was another thing that kevin (laughs) kevin was just like no i'm not i'm not doing this because of this and that and we're just like okay dude whatever like it's cool and mike was mike was adamant about having to have a hotel room because he had to do his mohawk yeah He's like, I got like, I can't do the mohawk just freehand with no anything. Like, gotta have a hair dryer, gotta have X Y Z. So I was like, okay, you know, I get, I get it. But we were like bummed because we were like, dude, if everybody could just stay out here. But then again, like in hindsight, they'd have been miserable. Like they, at some point on the on these tours and things, like you start to realize certain people, it's like you don't want to push somebody outside of their comfort zone because that's just gonna yeah. make it worse. Right. Like if you're more comfortable staying somewhere else then go ahead because if not it's just going to be a, a shitty experience and that's the last thing any of us want so right it, it all was out. that was that the widow was that where widow played did we open for yeah. widow north carolina widow yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that, we, we played on before. we played on friday night it was that show right or did we play on I, saturday night did we open for hellstar yeah you open for hellstar that's the okay one. So that hellstar was the second was and i didn't okay. meet james riviera there um 
I met him late, obviously later in Virginia or whatever, but yeah, I remember, I remember being like, Oh man, Hellstar's playing. I think by the time Hellstar came on though, I was off like in the woods with whoever else. And right. I, I didn't even know like what was happening. Right. Was like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was easy cool. to do it while man it was easy yeah. to lose track of time. Like I remember when Manila road played, I really wanted to see Manila yeah. road. And that was a, uh, we had a real bad storm come through Wom that year, like the 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 weird shelf cloud that has like oh, yeah. can cause tornadoes, but has like you know eighty mile per hour wind. Just it blew part of the the <laughs> yeah, yeah, part of the thing off, and yeah. I got real oh, drunk yeah. that year. That and I don't remember which that was that actually year. that year. I think I got, it was actually, you, that I got drunk that year. No, no, no. At this at <laughs> this Wom, so we we played the first the first time we played Wom, I I didn't get real hammered uh not as much as the second time so we didn't yeah. have to play till saturday so friday i was like oh getting wasted james go james goes over to the gas station and buys like a 30 pack of keystone light and he comes back with a king cobra he's Ooh. got a king cobra i don't Ooh. even know why Ready <laughs> oh, man. Drinking king cobra. so we're getting <laughs> wrecked man and dude like that crazy storm happens where it's almost tornadoes and i'm wasted and i'm like it's fine man cds are blowing off the merch stand i'm like it's okay <laughs> and then like 15 minutes later dude i'm done i remember at some point during the day james was a picture like right in that moment too when we were all huddled up together in there yeah. like, there's a picture of us all <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, and yeah. I, James was like refilling his King Cobra bottle with Keystone lights. I, and he, so I go to the van <laughs> and James is passed out in the back and I'm in the front seat, you know, and I'm passed out too. And somebody comes and they're knocking on the window. They're all freaked out. And they're like, Oh, and I, I open the, I open the door and I just, I'm, I'm a zombie. My eyes are barely open. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, Oh, have you seen so-and-so we're real worried about him. And I'm like, no, you're going to need to move back. And I just went, and just <laughs> fucking hurled all over. And then I just oh said, God. sorry about that. I closed the van <laughs> door again. And James, the best part was James was passed out in the back the whole time. And he tells me afterwards, he goes, dude, when I heard that door knock, he goes, I cracked an eye and he pulls up the, he had a flip camera and he goes, I filmed that whole thing. <laughs> and then he goes, after you shut the door, I put it back down and I fell asleep smiling. That's what he said. <laughs> I still haven't seen the footage. I want to see it so bad I was because say, I, mean, I mean, you know, hey, oh, dude, it like, was too great anymore. Yeah, it's like it's, it's I don't know. Like, I don't even know. Yeah, I, he like, had to have backed it, it up. But down. oh, my yeah. gosh, man, I, I projectile vomited. And I, I, at least I told him I was like, you're going to need to back up. So about the storm, though, because I remember this. It was so hilarious to us. And I don't know why. I mean, this is typical, but like there's this like deadly, apparently tornado or something that's about to happen that is happening it like ripped the roof we saw this roof this thing go flying yeah big the, chunk of the oh, roof wow. flew off um and i remember we thought this whole situation was hilarious for some reason because we're all probably drunk already and we're, <laughs> we're like oh my god and it was so funny because we saw um is it detise is that how you yeah, pronounce it? yeah. okay so we thought well, we knew it was Datis, but we kept saying Datis because we just <laughs> wanted to be stupid and we thought it was funny. So, um, <laughs> so anyways, we're like, we're kind of laughing this whole thing off and everyone's like, you need to get into this thing. At the, the shelter. Storm. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Go, go. And we're, we're just like laughing, like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? And of course we see this roof get ripped off of this thing or whatever. We, and I don't know why we just thought it was very funny, but we were laughing about it. And I remember somebody had datis or datis somebody <laughs> carried him somebody had was holding him like a baby and was running <laughs> they were running from the stage all the way to this roofed thing that we were all oh man what a and glorious thing to running know through the, running across the field and we're watching them we're laughing our ass off because he's this little guy <laughs> and it was just such a fucking bizarre sight it's like this storm is raging and like this thing got the roof ripped off and someone's running with the promoter of the whole show like just running with him like to save his fucking life or there yeah there was there was like an enclosed shelter that would have not saved anyone had it been a tornado it would all fallen in Yeah, they were telling us to like get to this thing and i'm like well that thing's not safe either we're in the middle of a fucking field it's like open wind it's like i mean not i'm sure there wasn't even that much logic to my thought process that. <laughs> but, but i'm but i was just like this is a joke like if this is if something's gonna hit us and kill us like this isn't gonna save us but um <laughs> yeah exactly so we're like we were just laughing our asses off and we made up this joke that basically i was like dude wouldn't it have been funny as shit if this person was like running with him 
And then the tornado just comes out and they get just sucked up into the tornado. And we're just like, hey, this, you were right. <laughs> uh, it was this whole thing where he was adamant about like the safe. I mean, obviously he puts on the whole show. He's got all this, <laughs> yeah. there's many reasons for him to care. Um, but it was just so funny because it's just a, a bunch of dudes like us. We were just like, don't give a shit. Like, dude, wouldn't it be cool if that fucking roof sliced you in half? Like, <laughs> yeah. Dude, Jesse, Jesse like, was like, death is like the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> Jesse was like smoking pot with AK or something. Because okay. yeah, yeah, Flots, yeah. Flots played that gig. They played, I think, uh, it might have been one of the nights. Did they play that? I, mean, I don't know because I swear that, that, that the maybe that was maybe I'm blurring maybe I'm blurring my wombs. I swear they were. I just remember him being really far away from where we were smoking okay. pot, and he was that wind picked up and he was like, "I should probably get back." And he said, "I started running and I saw that roof fly off and I was like, shit, I might die." <laughs> <laughs> he was high as fuck too. Yeah, we were just all in a state of just like you it was just I did not care I, it was I, debauchery like, and inebriation that's that's yeah i we were getting I, the full european experience here <laughs> in ohio yeah i mean it, it was just so i mean it's one of the funniest things i can remember of my whole life is just this guy running across this field with <laughs> little datus just try, <laughs> trying to save him from this little... like, supposed storm that's like impending or something i'm like what 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 is the level of like urgency to this i've never seen someone run with another person like i've, I've only seen that in movies like like carrying a child from the, like a baby it's like running for yeah. cover and we're all just like laughing like drinking out in the middle of the field like, oh man it's so that's funny too man. good <laughs> it was a blast that was a great show good times oh man hopefully datus watches this datus you were right it's you're absolutely right looking back i see the error of my ways the storm was very serious it was it was Sorry it was much roof. more serious than we uh than we uh <laughs> yeah, we were we not. were acting like we were just oh, like no. i mean i was i was so wasted and i was like sitting on like the merch tabletop yeah i remember I just, it yeah. whipped up and sarah's freaking out and yeah, because George yeah, Call gave me an ask a CD. Was, and, that's where we were because all the merch yeah, was, was in the, that it was like the, all the merch was in that little hut. Yeah, 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 and George that. Call had given Sarah an ask a CD. I was pretty stoked about it, and the damn thing blew away. I, I don't have it to this day. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Oh, another I was like, thing. What the fuck? He was there, right? Ask a plate or, yes, or yes. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he right. was. First of all, and Banshee because he plays in Banshee. That's that's uh, yeah, or he that's sings what it was. It was Banshee, right? Or was it Aska? It, I don't know. I got flyers. It was somewhere. definitely Banshee. It's, definitely played because I remember being excited to to see to hear that. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't that familiar with Ascot. I still haven't really given them a proper shot, but um, I liked Banshee some of the stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, cool. And but it was funny because I've got a story about that guy. He he met us and he was like, um, and this is highly controversial, but he he met us and Chris had the carnivore symbol yeah tattooed on his arm and it's like this it almost looks like the the speed metal symbol in a way um but anyways this guy from aska like he mistook this for some sort of like nazi symbol and he was saying something about like oh like white power this and that whatever and we we're like what like <laughs> it was so fucking bizarre now this is one of those things where it's like you it's like okay this guy's a great vocalist i'm i'm excited to meet him and then he like throws this shit at us and we're just like, <laughs> and it's like, what do you say? Like, no, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> like, no. okay, bye. No, like, thank you. I remember. Like, All right. I okay. do remember you guys talking about that after it happened. Uh, and I, I don't know, Monte, you might yeah. want to edit that part well, out. It, you might well, want to edit like, the story out, but this is oh, good. I know, yeah, good. I mean, feel free. But uh, yeah, it was just like. Oh, it all stays. Like, Everything stays. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, you know. Chris certainly doesn't care and neither do I, but the guy from Ask might, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah, I was just like, whoa. And then and then it sends Chris into like the spin and he's like searching to like make sure that's not like some like symbol for that. He, he was like, right. he's like, oh my God. And Chris, of course, Chris, anytime he got a tattoo, there was I'm sure there was little to no thought or preparation. It was just like I want to actual death and like green smoke and fucking the carnivore symbol and then like later like goes to look it up and he's like oh oops <laughs> <laughs> i mean i still don't know if any of that's but it how'd, certainly you, wasn't anything how'd you know this was the symbol for nambla 
yeah yeah. Yeah, crazy man but yeah it's just little things like that all the time running into different people and different bands and i mean it was cool just i mean even that experience was i mean as crazy and wild as that is it was still cool to have that moment to remember right that was crazy how did you guys get your your spikes and stuff to germany that did happen right yeah 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 ship Um, them gosh you know i i remember pat we just packed we packed them. We brought them on the plane. Yeah, it was not a problem. I don't know, I don't know why or how or anything. But I remember. It's funny because I've got a picture that I took of all my stuff. Yeah. Just laid out, and I was like, "Oh, going to Germany or whatever." And it's like all the fucking bullet shells and like all the spikes <laughs> and everything, and like <laughs> Nikes and whatever. Yeah, my whole outfit basically laid out on the ground, <laughs> shoulder pad chains. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, like let's another one of those things where it's just like, oh yeah, it's fine. Like let's go." <laughs> <laughs> the airport like you know who knows but anyways yeah i mean we i don't i don't remember shipping any of it um wow so man someone may, someone may correct me but i i remember that picture being taken and that was my yeah. luggage and it was i mean that's we went and did it i mean i remember going through the x-ray or whatever and i remember them like looking at the stuff but it wasn't um yeah i guess they didn't deem it any kind of risk other than <laughs> I'm, I, I that gets know. me man my grandma I, I tried to get airport I, I just my grandma I, tried to get on an airplane with toenail clippers and they were like nope throw that shit away <laughs> yeah. he was like are you kidding me yeah i don't know man uh, i mean maybe did you check your luggage or like but, did you like did you check your luggage it wasn't like in the overhead or something because i think if you yeah, check stuff i checked it yeah yeah, yeah. i think if I, you I check did. stuff you can get more shit on planes because right. you're not by it technically yeah i, I so. checked it i remember there being some talks about shipping some stuff potentially but i don't yeah. uh, to my recollection i don't think we did that um i've always been curious about that um, yeah yeah i mean that was that was crazy in itself even just being in another country that's the only time i've traveled internationally um mm-hmm. it was cool it's crazy being on this big huge plane i mean we flew from here to charlotte and then from charlotte to frankfurt um germany and it was just crazy being on this i mean i'd never been on a plane that big either very wide a lot of people on the plane um I remember them playing movies on the plane. We were drinking on the plane. It was just wild being in a band that was that wild, being in a plane and just, I mean, it's as simple as that, but I mean, I could go into description, but it was just like looking at each other like, dude, I can't believe this. Like, this is nut. Who is like, how, how did we get to this stage? Like we're flying now to go play this show. Like, and it was all because Oliver, the guy that puts on the show just heard one of our songs that, and somebody uploaded it to YouTube. Not even yeah. us. It was just someone else's page on YouTube just uploaded City Built with Skulls. And this guy heard it and he was like, Hey, do you want to play the show in Germany? And we we're like, Yes. <laughs> and that was like, it's so bizarre too, because so many of like my biggest goals in life were accomplished like in mm. such quick succession in that band. And it's incredible. And I'm so grateful for everybody, Vic. I mean, for you to even put us on that tour was I mean, even if I just had only that to look back on, yeah. like that, that would be more than enough. It's, I just feel like us doing what we did at that time and Vindicator and every everybody that was doing that and touring, I think that experience is just unlike anything else. And it's yeah. it's something that is so bizarre. And so many people, so many people don't even get to travel. So many people don't even travel. Right. It's like eight, you know, I mean, it's just such a, it's something that, should just be cherished and i i i loved every part of it and i mean being able to go over to germany and you know just acting up over there and being crazy and running through the cobblestone streets and just like acting you know i remember oh my god that like I, I barely remember certain things but other things i remember i'm like oh my god we were we were in this bar for all night long and they people kept buying us beer because we were in one of the bands and they just kept buying us these big, I don't know if you've ever been to yard house, but these big, huge, tall beers. Right. That basically everyone can just serve themselves from or whatever. And they just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. And like half the people were like passed out at the table. There's just like (laughs) coins, all these European coins everywhere that we're just paying with. We don't know shit about the money. We're just like, (laughs) Oh yeah. Here's it's like Dr. Steve Brule, like three of coin, like here you go. <laughs> three of coin, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, equals one of paper. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we don't, yes. it's like, 
we didn't like i just remember it being like blurred out i remember at some point i felt like i was the only one that was still awake and we were in this dark <laughs> corner of this like pub and it was probably like 3 a.m or something and i remember like looking around and there was this one guy who had been at the show who was like a big nasty savage fan and um he was real cool with us god i wish i could remember his name he's still he's friends with me on facebook but um he was the one that like invited us out to the bar um mm. and it was just because i like nasty savage and he did too and like he found out and like that was it um so <laughs> best friends forever <laughs> yeah really <laughs> well this guy hooked us up but we yeah i mean i remember like i looked around and like every, chris's head was like down on the table and like everyone was yeah. just like out and i was like oh my god we got to get out of here so like paid whatever bill and then there was the weird thing of like do we tip them do they not like tips and like all this weird stuff about like weird cultural Europe. things it's, you know it's yeah just, like I remember the food was way better over there. Even like, you get like gas station food and it was like so good. Like it, it's not like just trash, like Seven Eleven crap that you just put in your right. body just to like, I don't even know what it does to you, but it doesn't do anything good. But yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, I just remember being really impressed with that whole experience. And I remember being, being in a room with all these bands before, uh, it, I guess it had to have been after the show, but basically the whole room was filled people we had all built this like pyramid of beer cans and it was like this and big ass room and one of the bands was antichrist i don't know if you've heard them they're from yeah um they toured here in the u.s once and it was awesome but um they're sick but they were in there with us and so were a couple other bands and um we were all drinking all these beers and we had this like pyramid of beer cans and somebody ended up taking like this fake tree and like throwing it into the pyramid and all the beer cans went everywhere and then I remember at some point the rest of the band was like, "Hey, why don't you go to Oliver and ask if we can have more beer?" And <laughs> Oliver's like the head of this like fucking like international festival, and I'm like fucking Joe Schmo from Virginia that's just like supposed to just trot into his room while he's doing his work to hold up this fucking establishment of metal. <laughs> I'm just like, I have more beer. <laughs> <laughs> like this is not even the right guy to ask. Like it's so obnoxious and stupid. So uh, ended up getting Chris to go in there with me, I think. And we were just like, oh, is like, is there any more beer? And he's just like, oh, yeah, like, you're, like this guy has it over here. And we went and got more beer. And that was all that. <laughs> I, I still look back at that. And I'm like, my kind of show. I'm, I'm like ashamed of that moment. I'm like, God, did I like, why did I have to ask this guy for beer? Like, <laughs> like we're so lucky to even be here. Like, I'm just like asking this guy for beer. But, Get some more beer. <laughs> pretty stupid but just like everything else um no it was a blast that was totally incredible very thankful for that and just having just that experience alone but yeah it's just it's kind of bizarre to like looking now looking back it's like it's almost put me in like a weird spot of life where it's like okay i in my early 30s i'm still potentially going to do some band stuff maybe but it's like it just it's just so bizarre to me to like have just hit the things that i want to hit and i'm like well what do i even do now like uh, cool. like my dream was to play in germany and it's like i i did that i mean sure there's other yeah. shit that i want like i would like to have bigger success with a band like i think i could have had a carriage but um beyond that i mean it's like and success is only in terms of like people who've heard it like i i just want right. to share it like it's not even about like oh i want to make some mo- i've never made any damn money from anything just I've spent who knows how many thousands and thousands of thousands. Of hours. I mean, you know how it is, Vic, but yes, yeah, I mean, you don't make anything, but um, right, yeah, it's uh, that's all. I mean, I guess if I could just get uh, get in front of more people and playing live, I mean, that's that's the joy that you get from it, at least for me. I there's nothing like playing live, I, I love doing it, I could do that forever. So, who knows, maybe the the next group I'll hit another 30 day tour and try to survive in my 30s. I doubt. This will be we the last time. Anybody not as here. resilient, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I know that. We just went to see um, Top Gun, and I we did like this Top Gun day where we all got together and drank and watched Top Gun and went to see the Maverick. And I like never drink anymore um, with any kind of frequency, so it was quite quite a day. Um, yeah, it was not the same. <laughs> it's not the same as it used to be. I was yeah. like, oh my god. Like a couple shots in, I'm like, okay, <laughs> gotta gotta hold back a little. This is gonna go off, off the rails if we keep it this pace. Where's my, where's that chicken noodle soup? I'm yeah, getting hungry. Mike, Mike is like, oh, here, I got this big ass bottle of Old Crow, and I'm like, 
I, I smell old crow and my soul escapes my body. It's just the worst. <laughs> it's literally like something in me is like, stay away from this. And that's the only instinct that has ever come from smelling that alcohol. Jaeger does that to me. <laughs> yeah, that was my yeah, go drink, man. Jaeger, I, Jaeger I pulls a Vic when he's like, stand back. You got to stand back. Yeah. Yeah, Dreadbull <laughs> yeah, yeah. doesn't handle Jaeger well at all. No. Oh, I yeah dude that was my that was my drink i would always jaeger was my my thing but even now though it's it's just kind of like oh god like and it sucks because i've never Why? Been a beer, Why? yeah i've never been a beer guy either so like i mean you talk about the beers like i would barely even i'm i'm, I'm getting all this beer for like everyone else i didn't even drink beer i would drink <laughs> liquor um but yeah i mean now i'm just like god it's like even drinking a little bit now i'm like jesus it's um, back then it was nonstop, and now it's like borderline never so not yeah. that i won't when i get the opportunity but it just certainly isn't the same so i'll say that it's the natural progression yeah, yeah. that's why we're all we're getting there really is <laughs> yeah i can yep. keep the music fast but other than that uh, <laughs> we become yeah, decrepit we'll breaks in some other aspects maybe yeah we're, yeah, all, yeah we're all turning into that van our body salads <laughs> once in a while yeah yeah i'm the 15 passenger van with no brakes. Yeah. And you're trying Watch. to put out the fire with a Dr. Pepper with cigarette butts in it. Yeah. That was my uh, breakfast. <laughs> cigarette butts in a diet pector. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Pepper to wash it down. That's that's right. Oh, Robbie. Oh, um, you know, normally we, we have a, a tons of questions to ask. We've got games to play with our guests, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. Um, but this has been the most enjoyable two and a half hours that I can remember in a long time. I could listen we could all listen to your stories and maybe, you know, we'll have to have you come back on another episode. We're going to ask you actually ask some of the questions that we have, but I have really uh, enjoyed just hearing road stories. This was like just wildly entertaining, yeah, um, yeah. but uh, you're I, a great I, storyteller. Like yeah, you would, really would you, would you, some good images. <laughs> would you like to come back on another episode? I'd, just... be, I'd be thrilled. And I, and I'm happy to answer whatever questions you guys have. I normally am not the rambling type, but, these stories unfortunately take up a lot of real estate and <laughs> no, 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 that is perfect. Imagine, well, so these, these yeah. stories yeah. are fantastic. This is the stuff we live for. Yeah. I mean, we love. often get like a story or two from our guests, you know, some good ones to have an hour and a half or two hours really of stories. I, you know, again, if it wasn't late and people have to work tomorrow, sure. I'd be sure. sitting here till midnight hearing Same. stories. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> so no, but we definitely want you to come back. Um, Absolutely. And before we go, we always ask our guests, if you wouldn't mind doing a bumper for us, you know, uh, this is Robbie Rainey of Carriage and you're listening, watching and listening to Heavy Metal Horror. And I'm not sure if I can impose upon this, you know, because you haven't been singing. Are you able to do any of that in your King Diamond falsetto? Like when you hear, oh, when you say heavy metal yeah. horror, like yeah. Robbie Rainey of Carriage, and you're watching and listening to heavy metal horror, you know, you know something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. I got you. All, All right. right. Let's, cool. Let's go. All so right. Heavy metal horror. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is Robbie Rainey with Possessor and Carriage, and you are listening to heavy metal horror. Nice. Perfect. Excellent. Thanks. I woke up Thank tomorrow, so you guys better <laughs> use that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's that's fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, we, we definitely want to have you on. Um, yeah, anytime. I'm, no, I'm that, happy to come on. Yeah, yeah this that, is so that fun. Would, that would be. Yeah, it was just great you. to sit back. And I'm just, you're a fantastic storyteller. Uh, and just hearing all these stories, like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was, was wiping in, away tears many, mm, many yeah. multiple times. <laughs> You can, uh, well, I've had to live with these stories in my. I've got nobody to tell these stories. To. <laughs> well, either they we'll don't share give them. shit or they won't believe it. So, um, <laughs> yeah. you guys have my full uh, full attention here. I can. Yeah, I'm gonna have nightmares right. of bush hobos now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you're welcome. No, no that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, the good. bands I was in, we didn't do a lot of traveling. We did the like college circuit. We didn't, you know, because we were in college, so we just you know play a couple bars at one show college, and we just kind of hit some colleges, but. It's not being on the road. That was what we always wanted, you know. Yeah. But no, to hear it, it's like, yeah, that's that's, that's great fantastic. stuff. Yeah, that's wild. It, it was a lot different when we uh, got a little bit older and we could afford to like rent vans. Then everything was uh, a lot a lot smoother. But yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what, man, riding that rickety thing was uh, never. <laughs> there was never a a morning that was without screams and fire and 
never ending death trap. How long did the trauma last? I mean, you know, you told me like there's all these stories. They all ended with like screaming and waking, being thrown up out, you know, out of a sleep. Yep. How how much therapy did you have, or how much sleep? <laughs> you know, none. how long did it take <laughs> you to like? Adjust and like, did you wake up every night like waiting for screams? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, this affected looking my... for flames. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's got to be a I, trauma I somewhere carrying over from all this. <laughs> no, I think it was such a strong, powerful experience that it just took uh, every bit of energy from me. And at the end, I was just like, <laughs> I, it was therapeutic in its own way, in its own Ooh. sick way. I think we we all ended that and we're like, okay, well, something horrible was exercised from our <laughs> bodies and lives and, like now we can, and maybe that's yeah. part yeah. of what the band was in general anyway which uh, i'm very happy yeah. about. i will say this um just to leave this on the table we are potentially going to be we're working out the details but we're potentially going to be doing a it's the next year is the 10 year anniversary of make them eat metal for possessor and we're trying to do either a reunion show or a couple shows or something um, it's possible. So can't promise it hundred percent, but hey. we're talking to a couple of the members and if it's possible, we're going to try to do it. So hit, hit awesome. me, I'm going to hit you up. Uh, yeah. I'm going to hit you up after we're done talking or tomorrow morning. Sure. Uh, I, I got some info uh, that might be, that might fit, might tickle your fancy, feel Ooh, like yeah, your fancy man. tickled. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I'm you thinking a new tour, newer, new van. This is going to be good. <laughs> we'll come back the next, the, the New stories. New we stories next new year. Stories. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be. <laughs> I took one something. shot. That's all it took me to puke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the stories are going to be a lot shorter. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, smelled the, I smelled the whiskey and I threw I up all old over the crow, place. That's all it took. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, if me and Vic can get in the same room again, something's going to happen and it's going to be a good thing. So we'll, we'll Why do you think we do the separate thing? You know, we understand, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. Well, hey, man, uh, Robbie, thank you again for coming on the show. Um, I really appreciate it. We, we definitely will, will want you back on. Um, we're going to do our commercial, wrap it up, and then we're going to invite you when we all uh, do our thing. We're going to invite you to bring up the horns and join in with us. Right. So, All right. Hey, you can find Heavy Metal Horror on UnsaneRadio.com. Listen to full episodes or download to your device. You can find us on Facebook, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. On Instagram, look for Montag Lewis, one word. Our YouTube page, which is where you're at if you're watching, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if uh, we're also on Roku, the Hotel Metal Jam. If you know someone who'd like our show, tell them about us. This has been Montag, Master of Illusion. Chop Top. Dread Bull. And Robbie Rainey. Yeah, and Robbie Rainey. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm leaving. Let's just do that. I like it. <laughs> You can cut me out. I don't give a shit. Just delete this whole episode. <laughs> no, you're in it now. Oh, you're in it for you're good, it man. Now. Yeah. Vic, you gonna say who you are? All right. Hey, everybody. Hey, yeah, and I'm Vic. <laughs> and you've been watching and listening to okay, Robbie, bring up the horns. Heavy heavy metal. metal. All right. <laughs> nice. This is Doug Helvering, and you have been listening to Heavy Metal Horror. The best podcast that you've never heard before. <laughs> <laughs>